Hi, and welcome to the Stop Chasing Skinny radio program, where I try to bring everything that I incorporate into my fit life to you so that you can start developing your own fit life. And life really does begin when you stop chasing skinny. I've lived by that for several years now, and it really is an awesome way to live, and it just feels good. So once you stop focusing on that one, that skinny word or or whatever word you want to em- em- put in there, uh, you can really just start living. And that's the fun part. So tonight I invited uh, a woman who is very near and dear to my heart. And we've known each other, well, kind of my whole life. She's my aunt. And um, just a little bit more about uh, how we have connected on the fitness side of things. Um, We weren't always both so fit growing up. And now that I'm an adult and we've reconnected with my business, it's been really, really great. My Aunt Alice, she joined my 12-week online fitness challenge, and then she came to visit me a few months ago, and while we were hanging out, she was telling me all about her life transition and how she left corporate America and lived in the suburbs, and her and her husband and her kids, they've gotten back to nature, and they've really been... um, and just living, kind of living off the land. It's really cool. So we were talking about that. Um, so I want her to kind of go into that and how her lifestyle has changed and how she is living more sustainably and to share with us why we need to start caring now and a few different simple things that we can change right now that will make a huge impact on our environment. I learned so much while we sat down and talked one afternoon. So that's why I wanted to bring her to you all. Um, so, and She's she does something very interesting. I think it's kind of dangerous, but she assured me it's not. Um, she also does beekeeping, so we're going to really cover a lot of that. Um, so welcome, Alice. Hi. Great um, to be here. Yay! Thanks for joining us. Um, if I could just have you do a little more introduction of yourself um, and kind of your experience, maybe with the challenge and and some of the some of the thoughts you had during your transition, because um, I I think that our audience we have a lot of people who are kind of looking for um, just a way to make their lives better, but maybe even that transition. I have a lot of followers that pay attention to my uh, my departure from corporate America. So if you could kind of fill us in a little bit on your story, that'd be great. Um, I wanna hold you, stranger. Bird in the house, it was the open window. Called you in out of the Okay, once again, thank you so much for having me here. Before I start, I do have to uh, thank my sponsor. My sponsor is God, and I just want to give thanks to God for all the blessings that He's given me and enabled us to live the life we're living now. Um. Aww. Basically, this is a story about uh, my husband, John, and I and our family. Um, in 2011, we lived in the suburbs, and we, um, we were living an unhealthy lifestyle. We ate out a lot, watched a lot of TV. We worked really stressful jobs, um, 90 hours a week, and we had a huge house to care for. Um, through circumstances where we thought we were moving to the lake to relax, we started working on getting out of the suburbs started reading articles about uh, about being more sustainable, like Stephanie said, about feeding myself, about getting more healthy, about not depending on everyone. And um, we just worked our magic. We, well, I shouldn't say worked our magic. I'd say God worked his magic with us and got us to a place where we could um, sell our big house and buy just a small lake, couple lake lots, um, which we were nice and neat as a pen when we promptly turn them to a small farm. <laughs> um, we have uh, we have various animals. Uh, we have a bunch of chickens. I think we have 12 chickens and two roosters. We have two ducks, two rabbits, three dogs, and a lot of honeybees, probably, probably 150,000 honeybees right now. Um, basically, um, my husband got laid off, the economy turned, and we, and we made the transition. And... Uh, we, we arrived in this place, and he works for a small cabinet shop now, and I do some part-time work for um, a company that sells probiotics feed. And the rest of the time, I give bee talks, and um, we do a lot of stuff at home. Uh, we have big garden, and uh, basically, um, we're just 
living the dream now. It's, I mean, I think we're more busy than we were before, but well, one thing that I want to talk about especially is um, Stephanie's challenge was a godsend to me. Um, I had seen results on people uh, physically, and I had dreamed of that for myself, but I didn't quite attain those physical results, but the inside of me changed. I started believing in myself. Her positive influence was was amazing to get me to where uh, I am not a public speaker and I run from it, and now I'm volunteering to do it. So uh, my dream was to have a different lifestyle, and that included uh, just being more confident, being more joyful. And I have to say, SK Fit really, really helped me in the inside, um, and I'm really happy and I'm really thankful that I went through this transition. Um, when we were making this transition, one of these things that popped into my head was honeybees, the plight of the honeybee, and I fell in love with them. So um, that's where I am now. I'm doing a lot of a lot of things with bees. We went from one hive to ten hives. And my, can I go ahead and talk about the bees a little bit? Oh, or did you absolutely. Wanna... That was going to be my next question. Tell me about these hives because I really didn't okay. understand it okay. well, until you explained um, it to me. We originally started with one hive. That was my dream, to have a beehive. And I have to say, in 2011, sitting at a desk with a bunch of people in an office, and I went to my friend and said, I'm going to have a beehive. She thought I was insane. <laughs> and, and the more people I talked to, the more insane they told me I was. So don't let anyone tell you you can't do something because you can do it. I didn't know anything about bees. Um, I just started reading. And the more I read, the more confused I was because... Bees is our nature, and the more you know about bees, the more you don't know. <laughs> so um, I got the beehive. We just had so much fun with it. I have to say that first year we were there, I spent a lot of time setting out by it. I know that sounds strange, but that was my zen. That was my quiet time and my peace that I found. And and uh, God kept blessing us through the year, and we had enough money where we could up our, our beehive count, but we didn't have the land available. So I started just uh, meeting more people through the farmers markets and different things getting healthier and I started talking about bees and I asked them would they be willing to have a beehive of mine on their land because I don't have the land and they they agreed so I had I actually had more people wanting beehives than I had beehives so um, we started oh, a program called share a hive and we we're also on Facebook it's summer sweet honey s-o-m-m-e-r-s-w-e-e-t honey and um, basically there's a host, a person who has some land and wants a beehive. I put a beehive there, and I go and check it about every six weeks, and I maintain it. And at the end of the year, if there's any honey, we split it evenly. Uh, most first-year hives don't produce honey. I have one that's produced honey this year, so that's exciting. But um, it's just an experience. The host got to know more about bees. I see more and more of them getting excited about bees and sitting out by the beehive. And also, they also have gardens, and I've met people with uh, CSAs, permaculture farms, um, essential oils, herbs. I've met more people just by changing my mindset and being open to new ideas. And I think that, Stephanie, your program is really good at that. Oh, thank you so much. Ah, oh, that is I, – I just – I mean, obviously, I hope for physical results. Um, it, like that's why a lot of people come to me. But really, it's it's I want to see these big changes, and nothing makes me happier than hearing somebody who has um, has really made the change and is confident. There's, I mean, that's a freeing feeling. That is not chasing skinny, uh, and it doesn't. You know, that's that's just amazing, and that you guys have really changed your focus on life um, to things that that make you feel good from the inside out, um, not necessarily from the outside in like the big house or whatever I mean big houses are awesome but um, that wasn't fulfilling you because you were spending your time doing other stuff so it's so cool to hear you really enjoying spending your time um, with the beehives and just getting back to nature and experiencing experiencing more of life versus um, maybe some like uh, I guess just external things in life um, and I love hearing how you you found something that you 
were interested in, you started reading more, you dug deeper, and then you realize that it is even more confusing um, once you dig deeper. So oh, that's really, really great. And we are going to take a really quick break and we'll be back. But when we come back, I want to have you talk about why we really need to care about the bees and what happens if the bees keep dying off because they are dying off. For anybody that doesn't know that, they're disappearing. So I want to talk about that when we come back. So we're going to break for just a second. radio program where every Tuesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, you can listen to a new episode. We talk about everything that is related to living a fit life. Um, Life really does begin when you stop chasing skinny and you really start just enjoying everything that life has to offer. So tonight we have Alice and Alice is my aunt and one of my 12-week online fitness challenge complete... complete, (laughs) completers, clients, Um, and she is sharing with us her experience with beekeeping. Um, She came to visit me over the summer, and we started talking about bees, and so now I want her to talk a little bit more about why we need to care about the bees, what happens if bees keep dying off, and then we'll get into the health benefits of local honey because there are many of them. So yeah, if you could start out with the um, why we need to care about bees. Well, I'll tell you why we need to care about bees. Um, Einstein said four years after all bees disappear, man will disappear. And that is because there will be no pollination, no animals, no plants, which equals no man. Now, if you know Einstein, he's a pretty smart fellow. He's given us a lot of information, and I think it's very, very important. I don't think people realize how much bees affect pollination. Um, There are parts of the world where people are hand pollinating trees because there are no more bees. And that's a sad, sad thing. Um, The bees have a lot of different enemies. That's that's a problem. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people don't know, but a lot of big box stores, I won't name names, but they um, use plants that are grown from seeds with neonicotinoids on it. And what that is is a pesticide that is based from nicotine, and it permeates the plant from the root all the way to the top. So that would mean if even a drop of water gets on that plant and a honeybee lands on it, it could kill that honeybee, or it could permanently ruin their uh, nervous system, which will completely keep them from being able to get back to their hive. Um, Which will ultimately kill them. Which will ultimately kill them because they can't be out there by themselves. They have to have their hive. Um, we, it's really important that we buy our plants from a local nursery and ask the question, do you use neonicotine seeds, neonics, you can say, seeds. They'll know because they know how important it is. It's very important that we don't use pesticides in our yard, no Roundup. There's a simple weed killer that's vinegar and salt and a little bit of dish soap. It will kill any weed just as easy as Roundup. Um Oh, it's that's very great. important that you get involved. You, Anytime you see a Save the Bee petition, you read about it, you sign it. You eat organic. When, you, when you're when you paying for your organic food, that's supporting all the people that are supporting the bees. Um, also, another way you can help your bees is to plant, plant some plants and flowers that bees like. It's real easy. With the Internet, you can look that up. I let all my herbs seed out, and I've been watching the bees. They've been loving it. Wildflowers, they love wildflowers. Um, Campaign against GMOs. Um, With bees, I feel like, this is my personal opinion, that their health is dependent upon their gut health, a lot like humans. And the more garbage that goes in your gut, the worse your health is. And I feel like um, the bees are getting a diet of GMOs now, and that makes them susceptible to a bunch of enemies. I have a list of enemies that, are, that they have, um, and so therefore they're sick and they die, kind of like a person. So uh-huh. it's just really important to support your local beekeepers, to find out who they are, to go to farmer's markets, to 
to find out who's selling local honey. Um, it's really important to have these bees. Yeah. I'm very, well, I'm very passionate about them. There's a lot of people out there that are. That's that's great because they obviously we need to be, right? Because no bees, no food, no people. Um, and I found it very interesting too because I was kind of um, – I. I I had some I had some yellow flower problems in my yard. Um, uh, my neighbors weren't very happy with my um, my oh, th- my dandelions, and uh, and then I also had a lot of clover. And neighbors don't like that very much because it can get into their yard, and then they have a bunch of dandelions and clover. But that was really eye opening for me when you were explaining to me um, the progression of bees where bees will naturally what, go out and they'll search for the dandelions or the clover. And if they can't find it, then they have to go even further and they may end up dying. Could you go more into something? I remember us talking about that story. Well, the thing about it is, is that um, the closer they are to their hive to a source, the more life they have. They have to fly. They can fly up to three to five miles to get what they need. But if we provide it closer, that's even better. Um, people go around killing dandelions in their yard because it's ugly. But um, if all the humans are dead, there's no one to kill the dandelions. And so <laughs> clover and dandelions are the most, the, one of the favorites of bees. And uh, people are busy trying to have perfect lawns, and they just don't understand that you know, without bees, we're in big trouble. And so I have to say that I had quite the lovely clover in my yard this year. I, I refused to mow in certain spots. I I made a, a pack with myself that I was going to uh, stop mowing and start growing this year. So we did a lot more things in the yard so there would be less yard to mow. But I let a lot of my, I let a whole strip go out in clover. And I know that people don't like that. And I, and I get that. But um, I also just really encourage people to look at different ways to try to help the bees. Yeah, absolutely. And and like you said, if you if you decide, can you list a few different plants that maybe we could plant? Obviously, we want to have the organic ones or the herbs that would be beneficial because plants are herbs. I mean, even the clover, if you have a certain section, it's not going to mess it up. Now, dandelions, that's sure they come to like they they make the little puffs and then they go into your neighbor's yard so um, i did <laughs> dig those up but i did not use chemicals on them i dug them um, oh, i'm so proud of you thank you <laughs> i waited to until like maybe the bees got a little pollen from them and then i dug them up so i did i did try to be conscientious sorry bees well that, that's good um <laughs> There are a lot of flowers that you can plant and herbs. Um, I let my herbs seed out. I had fennel, oregano, basil, Jerusalem artichoke, um, wildflowers, sunflowers. They love sunflowers. Bee balm. Um, you can you can look that up on any anywhere on the internet. Just just like what flowers are my local flowers? Any any natural local flowers. Bees are, um, let's see, peppermint, I think, catmint. There's a lot of different things that you wouldn't think they'd like, um, but they're, they, they're looking for a source. And, and when people do away with sources and don't have any flowers or flowers that have neonics in their, in their yard, that's all they have to go to. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I will put some of that in the show notes for our listeners too, um, so they can they can find some of those sources. Because I know over the over the years, I mean, I've been, I've lived in a bunch of different places, and some in the city, and some you know, I guess not not country since I was a little kid. I did grow up out in the country, um, but just since I've been an adult, most of it's been in the suburbs or or in like a center city area. And it's really easy to have um, kind of like a little flower box with different herbs in there. And it's great to cook with or just even infuse your water with. So if you're helping the bees too, that's really awesome. I think that's a win-win-win for everybody. Um, I'm going to find some local nurseries that provide the organic plants um, because I I personally, I'm not, I haven't grown much here other than my yard, Um, but I will be looking into that. Um, and I'll put that in the show notes too, whatever I end up finding, um, just to help, help people find some stuff right here in Charleston or, I mean, cause we have a lot of farms around here. Um, yeah, so we'll find some of that too. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the health benefits of local honey because there are many of them. We'll be right back. Pin between four walls, little go between some Side, 
Welcome back. You're listening to the Stop Chasing Skinny radio program every Tuesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. on kinetichifi.com. You can also find the archives on my website, skfitlife.com. And I like to include tons of show notes so that you can find contact information for any of the guests that we've had on. Um, so this time, I want to go ahead and talk about some, um, some of the health benefits of, eating, of using, eating, um, buying local honey. Um, there are many. So Alice, if you could share a few different health benefits for buying local honey, that'd be great. Sure. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, um, when you go to the store, most stores, uh, regular grocery stores, you are not going to find local honey there. It might say local honey, but it's probably been heated. And when, when honey is heated, all the good stuff gets out of it because honey is the only food that has everything you need in it, even water. It's a miracle, miracle food. It can be used as a sweetener. It helps your weight loss, you have good energy. Um, there's a lot of vitamins and minerals in there. It has antibacterial and antifungal properties. It can be put on wounds, antioxidant, um, skin care. I use honey and sugar scrub in the morning, um, and I just eat a spoon of it. I mean, it's just got so many different things. Now, these things that I've listed are <clears throat> the things that science has proven, <clears throat> but also there is a, a lot of debates as to how it can help sugar diabetes, cancer, um, the list is just on and on and on. And um, if you've ever had a, a good spoon of local honey, you'll know what I mean. It's just so good. The way to find local honey, everyone always asks me how to find it. Well, you need to go to farmer's markets and you need to start asking around because one of those, if you, can't, if you don't have a local producer at the farmer's market, one of those vegetable producers knows of someone. Um, if you can't find them that way, you can just look up your local beekeepers association and they'll have a list of local honey people, and um, they'll have that good stuff, that stuff that's, that, that's actually been done in your area. That it's an allergy fighter. I don't know if anyone knows that. Um, you eat enough honey, it'll get rid of your seasonal allergies, but you have to eat it on a regular basis. But um, So would that be like a tablespoon a day? Is that enough on a regular basis to start to see some, some decrease in allergies? Um, I would do two or three, honestly, but that's because I love honey. So okay, <laughs> I don't yeah. really know scientifically. I'm I'm not a, a scientist, but I just know that um, my son, his eyes once a year just act up if he doesn't eat local honey. Okay, um, his eyes will be completely swelled shut because of the allergies. But if he stays on task and eats local honey every day, it won't affect him. That's interesting. And you're right. It's probably person by person, and it depends on the degree of severity of your allergies to begin with. So, um, yeah, that's that's really good. I, I see people suffering from allergies all the time. And, I, yeah, if you're getting extra vitamins and minerals and everything else that you need at the same time as naturally decreasing your allergic reaction, that's it's another win-win. Now, with that, though, you would – since you said when you heat it, it – um, it kills off some of the, the good stuff in the honey, so you would recommend not necessarily baking with it, right? Probably just using it. Um, um, well, I mean, I'm sure you could. I'm sure it's delicious, and I do, I do, you know, use it in baking. But I'm just saying if, you, if you're looking at it for strictly the uh, antibacterials and all the extra things, it's still going to be in there. It's just going to decrease it when it's heated. Heated honey, that when they heat it up really high, pretty much just gets rid of all those natural vitamins, but you definitely would want to substitute that for sugar when you're cooking, because obviously we all know sugar's not good for us now. That's that's the truth, and if you're using honey, that's from nature, and and uh, the bees, the honeybee is the only insect that we eat anything that they, in nature, you know, we don't eat anything else from anyone but the honeybee. So um, there's been honey found in um, pyramids. That's really? thousands and thousands of years old in a jar. It never spoils. It never rots. And they just um, they just opened the jar up and rehydrated it, warmed it up just a little bit, and it was edible again. So it's a food wow. that never spoils. So um, look at it that way. There's no preservatives in there. Um, a honey beehive can't 
can't get mold in there because there's so much good stuff in there. There's some stuff they use called propolis, and what that is is a tree sap that they mix with wax, and they use it to glue everything together. You've heard of bee glue? Yeah. That's all antibacterial stuff. That's good stuff, too. Uh, There's a lot of medicinal uses for that. I don't have a lot of information about it, but um, these are all substances that this little insect makes. They work together and make all these things, and it's just a miracle. It's just amazing. Wow. So now you said um, you said that it never goes bad, and so I've had honey before where it kind of starts to crystallize in the jar or container. What can you do with that crystallized honey? Do you have any well, fun if things? You, you warm it up in a real low heat with a with a, a little bit of water in a pan, just really low and slow. Okay. Don't go real hot. Just warm it up a little bit, and you'll see it starting to um, turn back into the way it was before. That's that's the best way to turn it back in. But that's all it is. It's just you know it's just set. It's just crystallized, and it's still edible. You just need to warm it up just a little bit. Okay, so it just kind of dehydrated a little bit. So yeah, a little water bit. Went yeah. Away. Okay. Wow, that's great. So what are some of your favorite um, favorite ways to eat the honey outside of the spoon? Because I'm just trying to think of some different, <laughs> um, like just some different things. Like, you know, it would be really good to put in um, in some yogurt if you're putting in yogurt or like maybe a shake. Um, do you have any other fun things that you like to do with it? Oh, gosh. Um, steel cut oats in, in, in any kind of, you know, oats. It's yummy in that with some bananas. Uh, John, he comes home every day, and, of course, I don't eat bread, but he does. He has a honey and peanut butter sandwich every day, so obviously that's good. I love it in my tea, my my green tea at night. I love it in that. Um, I just, I'm just i I'm more of a spoonful girl, honestly. I eat, I eat a lot of it. Just eat it raw. Just yeah, put, just eat it. <laughs> I hear you, because I even do that sometimes with coconut oil when I talk about the benefits of coconut oil. Um you know, people are like, how do you use it? And uh, well, I mean, I do put it on stuff, but really, I can just eat it off this. Food. That's me too. I'm, I'm coconut <laughs> oil girl too. We talked about that when I was there. Yes, uh, all of these natural remedies. It's just, it's so interesting, and it's just, it's great to be able to support the environment um, through through just just some awareness. I mean, going back a little bit to how easy it is to support the environment i mean really it's just plant some plants that bees like and to support your local um your local farmers too um i have another episode that's going to be on where i am talking with nikki who runs the agricultural side of low country local first and low country local first is a local organization um that brings food producers together with local restaurants and customers so she helps to run the farming side of it and they actually have a farming um, incubator where it's a bunch of small farmers that get together and they use like one common tractor and one common irrigation system oh, that's amazing. and isn't that really cool so I can't wait to talk to her about some of the local um, the local beekeepers here in the Charleston area because I'm sure she knows all of them um, and just some different ways to to connect with them and then I'm sure she can fill me in too on some of the different local um, organic food um, plant producers or nurseries um, that are around. Because, uh, like you said, I know you you're very kind and you don't want to name big box stores, but um, <laughs> I don't have any sponsors yet, and I'm not going to be sponsored by one of these big box stores. But we're talking about um, like Home Depot or Lowe's. Those flowers look gorgeous, but they're they're, I mean, they're they're even more dangerous for the bees because the bees are super attracted to them, and then they get there and oh no, they're kind of poisonous. So right, um, yeah. right. and you know, <clears throat> excuse me, um, colony collapse disorder. Although the scientists say they don't know what it's from, um, I'm just a, a simple person and I can figure it out because those neonics make the bees lose their way, <clears throat> and when they find a colony that's colony collapse disorder, the only ones left in the hive is the queen and a few male bees and all the worker bees are gone so in other words they lost their way and they couldn't come home so to me that makes sense that that's that's what it is it's the pesticides it's the herbicides there's a new one coming out called two there's 2d and 4d the new herbicide that the fda is trying to approve it's the same stuff that was in agent orange from vietnam oh my. Um, i'm pretty sure that we don't need that in our 
in our food, in our system, in nature, in our bodies. You know, yeah. there's just there's a lot of enemies out there. Yeah. Oh, that is, yeah. We don't need that. We don't need that at all. I love that you have the um, the natural way to kill weeds, which we'll put that in the show notes too, the recipe. Could you say that one more time? Um, basically, it's a gallon of white vinegar, a cup of table salt, and a tablespoon of dishwasher soap. And then you put it in a squirt bottle, and you go around and squirt, and it'll kill whatever you squirt it. Do it in the sun when it's sunny. Okay. Um, it'll also, it's not, it's not indiscriminate. It'll kill whatever, but it'll kill your dandelions, but it won't leave a residue in the ground for a million years. It's going to, you know, kill us like Roundup is in our, in the air and in the water and now found in human blood now. And, really? um, it's, it's a little scary. So if we can go, you know, the old ways really weren't so bad. The more we turn back to nature, the more, the more you open your mind to that, the more people you'll meet that are like-minded and you'll open a whole new world. It's just an amazing world out there. We just don't, we forgot was out there. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, you're absolutely right. This is totally in line with my whole entire message where I, I have a lot of people who do come to me for the physical results on the outside. And, you know, I work and I am technically in the, in the diet industry, in the, in the health industry. And um, I see and hear tons and tons of different things out there and um, it is hard for the the regular person to kind of decipher like which things are good which things are not so good um, my philosophy has been just getting back to nature just as as anything in its natural state I mean you know I'm all for technology and creating new products that make life easier but yeah you're right just getting back to more natural things um, that our bodies can recognize. A lot of these things that are coming up, genetically modified foods and that type of thing, um, our bodies, it takes tens of thousands of years of a stable environment for us to to, to change for, for anything in our bodies, for our bio- biology to evolve. And we haven't had that time and things are changing at such a rapid pace. So we are seeing a lot of these um, autoimmune disorders and a lot of the bees dying. I mean, the bees, that's, that's a huge, that's a huge problem. So, um, yeah, that's really interesting. I love that. Just getting back to nature. Cause yeah. The- and I love that your program really promotes the natural side of stuff. It, 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 that's what I love about your program. And I, and I'm not saying I didn't have any physical results because I am more strong. I'm way stronger than I used to be physically. And I feel good. But and the your inside, skin glows. when you open your mind, <laughs> And you, and you look at things to be different. You're promoting uh, going to farmer's market, eating local, staying away from GMO. That's where everything's at. That's where we should be at. And um, I'm, just, I'm just really thankful that, that you have your program. I appreciate it so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been great having you with us. Um, and I've learned so much from you from just the, the natural side of things. Um, and I encourage anybody to follow you on social media because it's just, and we'll put all of that that link in the show notes as well. Um, you post a lot of, it's, it's very inspirational stuff and it's just very informative too. Um, very science-based and it's just, it's good tidbits of information just to constantly educate yourself because things are changing so quickly and and we don't know it all that's for sure oh no you can never know it all you can never keep up with everything but but like you know like like we said an open mind and an open heart and and positive you know it can improve so many things in your life being positive and 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 eating healthy is you know like like everything that you see now we should stop paying the doctor and start paying the farmers the local farmers and eating local and that and get away from all the the prescription drugs and all the stuff that's bra- dragging us down and try to get back to nature. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the Stop Chasing Skinny radio program with Stephanie Keenan. You can find us each Tuesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. on kinetichifi.com. And we really just like to talk about everything that 
includes a fit life. And um, it's interesting to see what happens on the outside when you start taking care of yourself on the inside. Everything from your mindset to the nutrition that you're eating and even how you view exercise. Um, For years, and this is where my tagline came from, life begins when you stop chasing skinny. For years, I would just spend tons and tons of time um, working out and I never really got to where I wanted to be until I really changed my mindset. I changed my nutrition. Nutrition is a huge part of what we look like, um, at least 80%. I would say even more. Um, And it's not just about restriction. Just restricting stuff is not going to get you to where um, to, to that healthy look, that healthy glow, that healthy feeling, and that healthy life. So that's what we talk about every week on Tuesdays from 9 to 10 p.m. on kinetichifi.com. And tonight we still have Alice, and we've been talking about bees, why we need to care about bees, how we can care for the bees, um, the health benefits of eating honey, and I want Alice to share a little bit more about how we can find more information about her and some of the different causes that you care about. You've mentioned a couple different things as far as finding local beekeepers and that type of thing. So just um, anything else that you think... Anybody who has thought this is just a little bit interesting, I want to learn more. Where are the best sources of information that you've found in your oh, journey? Oh, gosh. That's, that's, a, that's a big question with the Internet nowadays. But uh, um, I'll tell you what, in, in beekeeping, it's like I said a while ago, the more you know, the more you don't know. You have no, you think you're keeping bees, which is pretty funny. You're not keeping them anywhere. <laughs> if they want to leave, they're going to leave. And so um, I know that a lot of um, – a, a lot of beekeepers, um, are, it's almost like an art form, and I hate to be like that, but it's true, because you have to form your own philosophy. Um, are you going to use chemicals in your hive? Are you going to kill a queen if she gets too old? You know, because uh, that's, that's what beekeeping is. If you're out to make money, then they're, they're probably requeening, which is killing the queen, and getting a new one when they think she's too old. And, and I just want to say that if you have any interest at all in beekeeping, My advice is to go after it. Go on the Internet, go anywhere and start reading about beekeeping and do it because the only thing that's going to keep you from doing it is probably your local city if you're in the city. Um, It's very easy to do. I have a book that I really like. It's called Natural Beekeeping by Ross Conrad. And I bought this book first and started reading it and thought, oh, I can't do this. This is way too complicated. And the reason being is because... He's doing everything natural, and he's very philo- uh, philo- he has a lot of philosophy in it. But that was the one that I go to now. Um, starting out, the, the World Wide Web, just type in beekeeping. There's okay. so much out there. I think there's brushy lane bees. There's just so much stuff out there that can tell you, um, give you advice what to do. Uh, if you Google a question about beekeeping, you're liable to get a couple of answers. And um, what I've done is... I'm not using chemicals because even though we have quite a few hives, um, our original goal was not to make money. It's to get the word out about bees, to get people to appreciate bees, to understand them. They're not out to just sting you. They're they're out <laughs> making their living. They all work together <laughs> as one in a hive yeah. for the success of the species. And um, So why would somebody this, use chemicals? I, um, maybe explain a little bit about that. Um, well, the... the uh, it's like I said earlier about the gut health of bees. Uh, because the gut health of bees or the bees' health is down, they have a lot of different enemies. They have varroa mites, trach mites, um, wax moths, American fowl brood, small hive beetles. These are all, um, I guess you'd say bad bacteria if it was a body. It's like bad bacteria. If you have enough good bacteria, it covers the bad bacteria and kills it. So if you have a healthy hive, they can have a few of all those. And, and they can survive. But when your hive is unhealthy, like a human body, then it becomes susceptible to the bad bugs. And so um, what I do, there's chemicals out there that a lot of beekeepers use. They're called, um, I don't know what they're exactly even called because I never really got into it, but it's a grease patty to kill varroa mites. But I've done some research and been reading a lot, and I found, and I made my own grease patties, which consist of coconut oil, some sugar, and some wintergreen essential oil. And I think that's going to do the trick because that 
supposedly kills varroa mites too. Also, you can put powdered sugar on the top of your hive, and and when the bees are um, cleaning themselves, they'll knock off the varroa mites. So Interesting. my approach is totally organic. I don't want any pesticides in my beehives. Now that doesn't mean it's right or wrong. That's my that's my personal belief. Um, but a lot of bees, if they're doing it for profit, or a lot of beekeepers, if they're doing it for a profit, they're using the pest management. Okay, that's, so that's a choice. But, so the you know, ones that um, but, the honey that you're buying in the stores now, I mean, obviously it's mass produced, right? So how does that work? Like, what, do you? Is there, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> so obviously they're well, using chemicals. You know, right? I, have, I have read a lot of different articles about it, so I don't know 100%. But um, from what most people, or from what's, what articles are saying, is that it's basically sugar, uh, sugar water and um, syrup. And they've turned it into a consistency like honey. Interesting. <laughs> so, so we're talking really like beet no sugar or sugar cane? I'm sorry? Beet sugar or sugar cane or something like that? Is that, uh, like, how they get that, their sugar? I guess. It's just regular sugar, and then they put it in with, like, maple syrup, and that's what I've read. Wow. Um, I don't really know what that is. That's not honey. Okay. The, I mean, in the bear, in the store, is not honey. Okay. It's just honey sugar, bear water, is not honey. down stuff. It has no nutritional value. You want something that actually comes from a local beekeeper. Interesting. They're the, they're the best. See, like, I, you know, I'm in the industry. I'm in the health industry. I know that buying local honey is best, but I didn't know about the the labeling. And labeling is huge. So I didn't know that, I mean, I didn't think the honey bear was local honey. Um, but I didn't realize that it wasn't really honey at all, kind of-ish. Well, you know, and also I think, uh, I don't know how they process all that. But I can guarantee you what you're getting in the store the regular stores is not local. Now, there are some natural stores that carry local honey, and you can question them about it. Um, my advice, if you really want local honey, is to meet your local beekeeper at your farmer's market or yeah. at least find out from uh, a vegetable source at the farmer's market because they're going to be honest and they're going to be promoting each other, and that's, that's what we all should be doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, here in South Carolina, in Charleston, we have we – have I mean, we have great weather most of the year around, or most of the year. So our farmers markets stay open a really long time. And for anybody who isn't in a warmer climate, um, I'm sure that your local CSA um, can help you out with that. If they don't even have, I mean, some of them might even have it as part of uh, part of their program. Um, but yeah, they might they might be able to help out. Um, what are some of the other um, sources? So we talked about a farmer's market. I'm just trying to give people some ideas about um, different places they might look. So a farmer's market, um, CSA. Well, you could call your local beekeepers association. Okay. You can Google and find out who your local bee where your local beekeeper association is. I hate to keep going back to the computer, but nowadays that seems to be the best way. You can almost ask it anything, but it can tell you what your local beekeepers association is, and you can call their phone number, and they'll tell you. They'll give you the name and, and supplier that's a local honey beekeeper, and they'll, they'll, be know, they'll know because they have the club. That's one thing I wished I had done is join a club, because I never did. I just went out on my own, but um, that's, that's the best way, and, and like I said, my advice is if you're interested in honeybees, you go for it, because it does, there's no requirement. You just have to have the passion for it, and you can figure it out. We've, yeah. we've been through a lot of different scenarios, and you can figure it out. So how many, you were talking about you didn't have enough land. How many bees do you, how many, um, like how much space does a beehive need? Well, it's it really doesn't need the specific amount of space. We just, we have two lots that's not even an acre. So to put um, 10 hives on that would be a bit ridiculous. Plus our neighbors, that would be unkind to our neighbors too, because they'd be annoying. I mean, they would just be too much. So um, like right now, like I said, we have less than an acre, and we have three hives on it. They don't necessarily stay on our property, but um, I feel like three to four on a on less than an acre is probably plenty. But you know, if you look at the bee yards, they're all they're all different. So basically, what we did was put our hive on one end of the shed where nobody walks, facing right. south. And there's no foot traffic in front of it. And it's out and away, so there's no little kids running in front of it. So there's no incidental stings. So you want your hive out and away from where people are so no one can really complain. Because, yeah. you know, some people will see a beehive and just lose it and want you to move. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they don't, I don't know. They, 
you can, you know, there's no real specifics. I suppose you could look it up, but there's probably not any specifics. Beekeeping is like that. There's no specifics. But like I said, we have three hives, and we've had four. Okay. But, but like I said, if you get too many bees in one area and you don't provide water from them and your neighbor has a bird bath and they're all going to be over there, oh. or your neighbor has a honey or a hummingbird feeder, they're all going to be over there. And, and we want to be kind to our neighbors because we don't want to be a nuisance. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I just wouldn't get more than that. Oh, that's interesting. So now as a beekeeper, how much time do you have to spend with your hives? Well, that, that is a relative question. It just depends on how much you want to put into it. Right now, I have to say, what, I, what we're doing is, is amazing because, because I have the seven different hives at seven different locations, I usually go about every three weeks or so because that's the life cycle of a worker bee to see what they're doing. Um, and, and what's fun about what we're doing is that I have made these great lifelong friends because I doubt that I'm moving these hives ever. These are my friends. I go over. Sometimes they're home and they come out and talk. Sometimes they're not. And I have one lady who always has a cup of tea and we have a great visit. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time. I, I've i just recently started making lotions, and so I've been melting a lot of wax. So on Sunday I spend a couple, three hours melting wax and filtering honey uh, through cheesecloth. I don't have the greatest setup. But, but for just one hive, really, they're... If you're not going to be too invasive, you would do two yearly inspections, which would take you half an hour, an hour. And then uh, to extract your honey would be the longest time, which would take probably two or three hours if you had a lot of honey. Um, I don't have an extractor, so so we have a lot of big pots that we hang <laughs> we hang the frames on right now. Okay. And uh, so we're very primitive, but there's not any time. And here's the thing. If you don't want to get in that high, I don't even think you need to. You okay. could just have the box for pollination and have them around. You don't even, I mean, that's what I feel like. There's there's some, I know a guy who's had a hive for 10 years he's never got into, never that's done anything so to. That's interesting. And he, he's the one that owns the fir, uh, permaculture farm, and okay. he has a CSA. He's the one that does the local CSA. He doesn't even get in his hive. So Interesting. So they're just really, he's just providing... A home for them, and then they're providing the work for him. Yeah, they're doing all the pollination, and he has all that, you know, all those wonderful vegetables and stuff growing out there and fruit trees, and they're just out there lo- loving life. And I have a hive with him, too. So, anyway, oh, I just great. think that once you get into something like this, it's just so amazing the people that you meet and the, the things that you learn. It's just amazing. Yeah, well, and that's that's really a part of my mission and my message too is just reconnecting with people. Um, you know, it's interesting because in such a you know an age where we all seem connected via technology, I've read a study that we have never felt more disconnected. So that is that is really nice, and it is really nice to be able to go over and have a cup of tea with someone, and um, and really just connect on that level, and just connecting because you make connections with different food sources too, things that you probably wouldn't know um, about, or um, yeah, just really supporting each other in that in that way. Um, exactly. One of the guys we know. <laughs> that has a hive. He's a solar guy, so. I mean, that just opens another whole new door. He sells solar panels and sets up solar systems. You know, there's the door when you when you start opening your mind, the door just opens up wide, and it's amazing. Oh wow, that's really great. Ah, oh, I love that. Well, I am going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for talking with us tonight. Um, I just I really enjoy just. You know, connecting with you, sitting at the coffee or the kitchen table when you were visiting, talking about bees. Um, it's really interesting. It's really important. There are a few things that we can do to make a really big impact. Um, and even just talking and, and hearing how easy it is to have a hive, that's really not bad. And what a fun hobby. I know people are looking for hobbies, a way to relax, a way to calm down, chill out. I see some people or, you know, they... They think like shopping's their hobby where all that does is just stress them out even more. So, I mean, it's really cool. Like if just having a beehive, you can put in as much or as little effort as you want. You're doing something great for the environment. So that's really awesome. So thank you for everything that you're doing too. Oh, well, thank you, Stephanie. You, you're just an inspiration to everyone. And uh, we appreciate, I appreciate you so much. And I appreciate you how much you've helped me with 
my confidence, and um, thank you for having me. I love talking about bees. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been wonderful to um, all of my aunts now uh, have participated in my challenge, so that's really cool. Um, you know, because I looked up to all you, you all, whenever I was growing up, and now it's really cool to be able to kind of give back. So, thank you so much, and we will make sure that we put all of your contact information in the show notes. So, if anybody has any more questions or wants to follow you on social media. I love following you on social media and finding um, all the little tidbits that you're sharing, um, you know, just different articles and not just about bees and honey, but just about nature in general and natural remedies. So thank you so much. You're welcome, Stephanie. It was a pleasure. And thank you, listener, for listening tonight. And make sure that you check back in the archives. We're going to put every single episode in the archives on my website, skfitlife.com. I also offer a 12-week online fitness challenge, which you heard um, Alice completed. So it's a 12-week online fitness challenge where you get downloadable training with clickable links that take you to videos. And you get a meal guide. I like to teach everybody how to eat so that you don't have to walk around with a piece paper. Stephanie said this or that. Um, So I really like to teach people how to eat. Um, Then we also have a private Facebook group where I do small group coaching and encourage accountability, photos to be posted, questions to be asked, and we really just support and encourage each other in there. Uh, Once the 12-week challenge is over, members can opt to move into the monthly membership where you continue to get monthly weight training every single month with the clickable links to different videos. You get weekly high-intensity interval training still, and you move on to a different private Facebook group that is for members who have completed a challenge. So it's more um, more in-depth questions, creating more of a rounded fit life. Um, You've gotten past the basics. You moved on to some other things. And a lot of people don't realize this, but maintenance is the hardest part a lot of times because whenever you're getting started on a journey, you have that. um, Yes, it's challenging to get over the lifestyle change. But once you've gotten over that, um, now maintenance, you don't have that, um, that excitement necessarily. So it's really great to have a group of people who are encouraging you to keep going and to make changes and um, really it is it is a journey so we offer all of that on skfitlife.com and I thank you again for joining us tonight